Hello Wanderers! The playable characters, what do most of them have in common? Well, they die. A lot. It's the most common manifestation of losing a game. So yeah, it happens pretty often. But it doesn't seem to be a big deal, you can always start over again, and it works. So dying in video games is a simple and perfect tool, right? Well, maybe, and maybe not. Most developers and players don't even think about it, like it's something very obvious. But despite that, it also has some downsides. For example, the value of life. You see, the death of the main character is actually a big deal, but the problem is that it isn't what it is. The death of your character doesn't really mean that he died, it means that you have to restart. So it just devalues the concept of death. But there are games out there that have a different approach. For example, Darkest Dungeon. So how to bring some value in your character's death? Well, it should kill him, that's what death usually does. It's that simple, this approach may lead to some very interesting outcomes in terms of your perception of your character. And just imagine, you found a character, you gave him a name, at some point after lots of difficult battles, after everything you've been through with your character, there is some chemistry starting to develop. You're starting to feel attached to your character, you give him the best equipment, you care about him, you listen to what he says, because you experience so many things together, you explore this dark world together. It's okay to love your character, there is nothing weird. Right? Right? But then there is a boss who turned out to be much stronger than you thought, and in the hard battle your character dies. And that's it. There is no way to bring him back. There is no plot armor for him. The only thing left of him is a little gravestone at the cemetery. And the point is that you feel something about it. Because someone who meant something to you actually died. And it affects your experience. You see, usually in video games, when your character faces some life-threatening circumstances, you don't worry about his life, no matter how close to death he is. And even when he finally dies, you probably think something like, oh, come on, it was so close, where was the last checkpoint? Because your character didn't really die, because he can't really die unless it's inscribed in this scenario. And if that's the case, you won't feel responsible for his death. It was not your actions and decisions that led to his death. Let's get back to Darkest Dungeon. Another interesting point is that your character's ability to die may also change your perception of your character. It may sound a bit ironic, but this ability to die makes your character more alive. He feels more alive to you because that is what living creatures do, you know, they die sooner or later. And don't get me wrong, I don't say that Darkest Dungeon is a good game or anything, that's not the point. What I say is that it has something in it that may, and may not, give you an interesting experience. And of course, it's not the only game in which your character can permanently die because of you. There are other games like XCOM, for example, but XCOM is a bit different, because you can save your game here. And it changes a lot. The God of Time problem, that's what I call it. Sometimes it's not a big deal, but sometimes it can be pretty crucial in terms of your immersion into the game or even the gameplay. For example, in XCOM you're playing as a commander. You control your soldiers, you manage your ship and stuff like this. And yes, your characters can permanently die in this game, but usually if one of your soldiers dies, you just load the safe where he's still alive and you change your decisions in order to save him. So basically your character can die only if you let him to. Only if it's your conscious decision, you're in total control of your character's life, because here you are not a commander of your soldiers, despite that you are, but a god of time. And that's the difference between Darkest Dungeon and XCOM. Plus, it also does no good for your immersion and in-game logic, because of the conflict between being yourself, being commander and being a god of time. And it goes even farther than that. You see, XCOM is a turn-based game, which relies a lot on RNG, aka random number generator. Like chance to hit, chance to dodge, chance to apply some effect and so on and on. And when the quicksave feature meets RNG, they will likely cause some problems, because all these numbers are starting to lose their meaning. 
For example, here is the situation in which I really need to kill this guy. But it happens that my chance to hit is too low. But instead of being what it has to be, the low chance to hit means only that I'll need to load game many times in order to finally kill this guy. You don't worry about your soldiers getting killed, you don't care much about missing. You don't need to think your actions over, because they won't have any unchangeable consequences. So usually it will go like this. Hmm, it seems to be a good idea. Okay. Oops, no it wasn't. Load the game. And if you end up in a difficult situation here, you will load your turn many times, leaving it over and over again like in the Groundhog Day, until you finally find the right decisions, relying on the knowledge your character never supposed to have, and it becomes a part of the gameplay. So you can finish the game not only without a single soldier dead, but even without a single damage taken. But is it really what this game was supposed to be? I mean, it's a turn-based tactics game after all. It even has a special place for your dead soldiers' memorials. So, is it really okay to abuse the quick save system? Well, seems not. It's considered a bad thing among many gamers. They call it safe scamming. And it seems like I have to restrict myself from safe scamming, because game doesn't. And not only doesn't punish me for safe scamming by any means, but it even creates an autosave before every turn for me. And this whole thing is just strange. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as if they gave me some overpowered gun with an unlimited ammo in some shooter game and said me not to use it just because it's considered bad and it will harm my experience. And at the same time, that game would have been designed the way where I need to use that overpowered gun. And even if I am to restrict myself, how do I actually do it? Where is the distinct line between normal saving and safe scamming? There is no ultimate answer. Usually there is no answer at all. And XCOM is not the worst case. Actually it's far from the worst. And I don't say that XCOM is a bad game, it's just an example. And pretty much all I said can be applied to almost every game that has the RNG mechanics and quicksave feature. But how to solve this problem? Well, usually there is no way to solve it unless you design the game without it from the beginning, like Darkest Dungeon. But there are ways to fix it a bit. For example, you can make checkpoints instead of quick saving, or like special places where you can save your game, like in Japanese RPGs, for example. But let's get back to the topic. Here I'm playing a stealth game called Splinter Cell Blacklist. So I am sitting here in this room and I know that there is a guy behind the wall, so I won't go there. But the reason I know about that guy is that he is the one who killed me. So I started over again and here I am. And it leads to the situation in which I am right now, where my character relies on the experience he never had. Because I was the one who restarted the game. My character from this game session has never seen that guy. He cannot know about him being behind the wall. And it breaks the logic of the game, the logic of what's happening in the game. It also harms the connection between you and your character and distances you from him. And it can be even more crucial if the game... F*** neighbors! And it can be even more significant for games that emphasize stuff like immersion, self-insert or something like that. And again, it's just a random example. I mean, just imagine you beating some game like I don't know, let's say, crisis, without a single death. The game kept you on the edge of your seat, nothing distracted you, it was hard, you were close to death and failure m multiple times, but you made it. And the guy who killed the final boss is literally the same guy that completed tutorial. I mean, it would have been totally different experience. Let's look at the games with some other approaches to a death. To death. Oh, screw you, English. So, if dying is such a handful tool in video games, then how to make the process of dying the way it doesn't conflict with common sense, the logic of the world, the way it doesn't make your character as some kind of visionary, which he's not, and the way it doesn't break the flow of the game and gameplay? Well, for example, you can make dying a natural thing, like a natural part of the local world, where the death is not the end. Like in... Yeah, Dark Souls. You see, Dark Souls is a game where you will probably die a lot. 
Plus, it's a game with a pretty high level of self-insert and immersion, and from software the developers of the game realized it. So they came up with a different approach. Here, when you die, you don't really die, because you are an undead. A chosen undead, to be precise. Each time you die, you are reborn near the last bonfire. And it doesn't reset the world, it doesn't reset your character. It's the same character who experienced everything you did. So there is no conflict between you and your character. And the world also aware of everything you've done before the death. And there is no such thing like loading your previous game here. So your whole experience is a continuous flow. Pretty much the same thing we have in most of MMO RPGs, but probably just because there is like no other way, because it can't reset the world every time you die, because that world exists not only for you, but for all other players as well. Or in Assassin's Creed, where you die in protagonist's ancestral memories. Or even in GTA. <sighs> I feel like I'm gonna burn hell for this word. In this game you don't die, after being lethally injured you will be recovered in the hospital. So yeah, it means that you can go on the mission, make some new friends, get shot in your head with a shotgun, and you will still be okay after recovering in a hospital. Oh, and when you go on the same mission again, those guys will act like they've never seen you before. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but well, it's better than nothing. Or you can even break the fourth wall, it will probably lead to some totally different outcomes, but it still can be a very cool option for some cases. And again, I don't mean that all games that ignore those problems are bad, it's not something that crucial, especially in some cases. But still, even some little things may have some real weight. And I found it interesting to research and to discuss. Before I go, I want to leave you with an interesting quote from George Martin's interview. I'm not a huge fan of the Game of Thrones, but it's topical. Thank you for watching. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There is some breaking news here, and I just can't ignore it. After I finished working on the video, I read Kojima's interview about his new game, Death Stranding. According to Kojima, his game will have some totally different approach to death, considering all things I've been talking about here. So it seems to be good news, and I'm looking forward to see what he will come up with. And yeah, if I had released this video earlier, I could have made a joke about Kojima watching my videos, but now the joke is dead before it was ever born. So let's mourn it.